Hey everybody, and welcome to another helmet ballistic test video. I am Mike B out here with my lovely Canadian assistant, Devin K. And today we've got the Polish WZ50 steel helmet. So a little bit of background about this, because I, I really, I really do enjoy this design. That's why I like doing these tests. Um, this was designed and implemented in 1950 by the Polish forces, and it was used through, um, through the 70s, but it was replaced officially in 1967. But it took a while, you know, to replace that stuff. So these were also one of the most widely exported uh, Eastern Bloc helmets throughout the entire Cold War. So it's cool to have one here. They're actually not that easy to get in the United States because I think so many were exported for so long. But um, I do, I do have a small supplier that I can get stuff from where I actually have these in the shop once in a while, so that's why I know what they are. I got this one, and it has a big ding in the uh, in the brim, and it's a little bit oblong, so I don't know what happened to this, but it's not in perfect condition. So a couple of caveats will start out. One, before you're sitting there finishing your comment about how we're destroying a piece of history, consider this. We are both passionate helmet nerds. We love helmets from all different time periods, all different countries. We've always had this question about, well, what can they stop as far as a direct hit, which we, second caveat, understand these are not designed for direct hits. They are designed for um, rocks, dirt clods, debris, random debris flying around from artillery, uh, falling down, hitting your head, hitting your head on stuff. Battlefields are not a safe place, oddly enough. And um, we understand that, but here's the thing. Direct hits do and have happened. So why not see how the helmet works and performs? Now getting back to the historical thing, um, this right here, doing this ballistic test, answers a lot of people's questions that they've had uh, about these types of things. So they might not be as enticed to go do, do it themselves or whatever. So the value we'll be getting out of this video and this test from this singular helmet that's got some flaws and problems with it is more valuable than this is actually probably ever going to be worth. So that's why we do these videos. Does that make sense? If you're still not getting it, that is your problem. We're going to get to the fun part now. So the first pistol we're going to be using is the Czechoslovakian um, VZ-50 in 32 ACP, 71 grain full metal jacket bullet. We're going to be staying about five yards for a couple reasons. One is so that Devin and I can almost guarantee that we're going to hit it and we can put our shots where we need to in case, uh, you know, multi-hit areas happen because we try to hit fresh steel. But those are the two reasons, so that's why we're at the distance. And it's really not a uh, unreasonable close combat scenario where a pistol would be used in this sort of um, distance in this, you know, in a, in a combat, like urban stuff, uh, things like that. So, all right. So that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to just, the, the very sloped angle of this armor is supposed to be deflecting rounds and that's what it did with this. And uh, I think it's gonna be on par with its later compatriot. Looks like probably damn near the same quality steel, yeah. Yeah, exactly, just a different shape. All right, let's keep going. All right, so a very easily defeated 32 ACP. We're gonna move up to the uh, nine by 18 Makarov, which we don't know the weight of this, um, but it's just the commercial two ammo. All right. That's pretty square. Very square. Yep, and it went right up and over. Nothing on the inside yet. No damage to the liner at all. That guy's still doing all just right. Just a little bit of bubbling, but not bad. It's just a little dent. Now those are both Eastern Bloc rounds, so we'll uh, we'll now use a uh, NATO round. So now we'll be using the 9 by 19 millimeter 124 grain full metal jacket out of the Beretta M92 FS. Still bounced, still a pretty square shot, so. And it, yeah, it plastered it. And it's not any really that deeper than the macro. Yeah. Hmm. So far, so good. All right, so it stopped everything so far. So now we're gonna shoot it with what was, at the time, another NATO caliber, the 230 grain full metal jacket 45 ACP out of a 1911. Nice. That's pretty consistent with other decent performing helmets. That's right. It's same almost deformation pattern, not too much more than the 9x19 and 9x8. And it's really good at deflecting. Yeah. 
the shape is, you know, the Soviets had some crap figured out. So like a lot of my friends, they're really good at deflecting. Bam. Now we're going to be doing the one that usually separates the um, really good helmets from the okay helmets. And that's going to be the 762 by 25 millimeter Tokarev. It's 80s Romanian surplus ammo out of a Yugo M57. I don't know what grain it is. I think it's a 95 grain bullet. I don't know the feet per second or anything, but if this deflects this, that's going to be uh, good news. Nope, no dice. Well, still pretty good. It's not the worst we've seen. No, that's it's all it, right. It didn't even dent the other side. Hmm. Yes, yeah, still see, went through. Yeah, it went through. I mean, that's, oh, there it is. It's oh, stuck. It's caught right in there. Look at that. That is pretty cool, actually. That's actually not bad at all. New. No. All right, right, well, let's finish her up. Alrighty, so it didn't beat the Tokarev very fast, very tiny, light round, meant to penetrate a lot of body armor t today. Basically, it'll penetrate most 3A stuff. So now we're gonna move to the opposite side of the spectrum. A lot of energy transfer. Um, so we're gonna shoot it with 142 grain, uh, semi wad cutter, full metal jacket out of a 357 Magnum Ruger GP100. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that's typical. Another one of those cool steel patterns. Yeah, too. I mean, that's a lot of energy coming in. And pretty close to a rivet, but didn't actually punch out the rivet, so. No, that's, that's. Normally those pop when you get oh, that yeah. close. So. That was that was really close. Huh, all right. So overall, really not a bad performance from a Eastern Bloc steel helmet. Again, like I've said in most of the other Eastern Bloc helmet videos, you know, the Soviet Union, uh, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, you name it, um, even Yugoslavia, which wasn't Eastern Bloc, but it's its own brand of, you know, Kami, according to the U.S. propaganda throughout the entire Cold War. Um, I think, honestly, like I said in the WZ6775 video, that that is just a ridiculous amount of foot lore that came out of the Cold War to, to demoralize things. If you think your enemy is just making garbage equipment or whatever, and it's just everything they make is crap and it doesn't work, um, you're not going to be as scared of them. The Soviets did the same thing about the Americans. Oh, everything they make is garbage. Don't worry about it. It's cheap. They're they're decadent. They don't care about work and labor. So I think the, the whole trope about Eastern Bloc commie helmets being junk is just something that was perpetuated through the 90s and mid-2000s at least until tests like this start to prove that, well, and YouTube came out basically all these Russian weapons, these Soviet weapons, Polish weapons, all these, all these things from the Eastern Bloc that were supposed to be junk, people were like, well, these are actually well-made and really cool. Most of the Western helmets and U U.S. helmets that we've uh, tested didn't do that well, to be honest. Like, they didn't stop much as far as a direct hit. Most of the Kami helmets that we've shot have done extremely well. Now, I see why this is one of the most exported helmets, because it was liked by a lot of different countries. These were used in the Vietnam War. These were used in the Iran-Iraq War, most notably. These are used in African conflicts everywhere around and, and everywhere around the world. These things pop up everywhere. And um, as far as getting, like, if, if I were to be getting this for my own protection, you know, if that's all I had and I was on a budget or whatever, and it was for shit at the fan, given a pass-fail kind of grading system, this would get a pass, in my opinion. What about you, Devin? I'd say that is also a pass. Yep, because it's... If it, if it stops that that kind of um, impact, those kind of impacts, it's probably gonna stop other things that are flying around and whatnot. So again, Polish WZ-50, these are getting a lot harder to find, especially in the US, but if you can get one, they're both collectible and, you know, now you see what it done. Jeez, what it's done. I can't talk. This is the last video we're gonna do today, Devin. I can't yeah, we're getting this. pretty damn hot. Yeah, yeah. It's, whew, it's like, it's already 90 degrees and it's not even noon yet. So, but anyway, so you've seen the kind of hits it can take from direct hits and et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's a pass in both of our book. Now, this was really cool because I got this from my inventory and it didn't really cost me anything except the cost of the helmet. But we've done other ballistic tests that are really like shooting really expensive and hard to find helmets. And that is only possible because we've had awesome supporters on Patreon and channel membership. If you wanna support us in doing our work, this kind of stuff that costs a lot of money. Shooting videos in general cost a lot of money, especially nowadays. And we can we can fund it out of pocket to an extent, but because of our Patreon supporters, we've, we've been allowed to do some really cool things that we both wanted to do for a couple years, and our Patreon, or just our viewers in general have wanted to see. 
and that's all through crowdfunding. So if you want to support us financially or me for others, my channel, I keep forgetting that. So we should make a, a, a dual channel, you know, like just a dual, joint. Yeah. One of those joint annoying channels where they've got their own and they're just, hey, we're doing a collab. Anyway. Um, so yeah, if you want to support my work, you can do so a couple different ways. You can become a channel member by hitting the join button below the video, or there's a link to my Patreon in the description. And right above that link is going to be a link to Devin K's channel. He has some awesome content on there. He covers a lot of stuff that I don't cover, and I probably never will because it's impossible to learn that amount of knowledge in that little bit of time. Life's way too short. So he makes great content too. Go over if you're into this stuff, you're going to learn a lot. So you can support him on there just by watching, and then he has a Patreon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you want to support us, finding or sorry. I gotta say the Discord thing. I, I promise I'll get it all out, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, five bucks a month or more on either method of support gets you into my Discord server, which is really fun. There's a lot of active people on there. I'm on there at least once a day. It's really interactive. I got a lot of cool ideas from people. I learn a lot from people. And it's just cool to see a bunch of like-minded people that believe in what I'm doing. It's really kind of neat. And I appreciate all of them. And they've allowed me to do some really cool stuff um, recently that's I never thought was possible. So that's cool. Now, the second thing is, if you want to support our work and you like what we're doing, but you can't do it financially, that is not a problem. I totally understand that. I've been there a lot, you know, in my life. So, but you can still support us by liking this video, subscribing to both of our channels if you have not already, and really a great way to um, support our work is to share this video out. It's really cool. Like, if you enjoyed this and you made it this far, you're obviously like, yeah, this is a cool video. Like, oh, why, don't, why don't more people know about it? Well, that's a great question. Because the algorithm doesn't really favor anything gun-related. That's the honest-to-God answer at this point in time. Um, it gets lower in the search results and stuff and you don't see it as much but if you share this video out it kind of it kind of uh, works against that and more people will be like oh well this is some pretty cool stuff I like this and I learned something and now I don't have to shoot one of these helmets so that's the second way you can do that and that's also a great way to support us and if you're in the third category and you're just kind of like eh, nah I ain't doing that well you've already supported us I hate to break it to you by watching this video so I greatly appreciate you watching, everybody who's watching. I appreciate my uh, Patreon supporters, past and present, and we'll see you on the next Helmet Ballistic Test video.